what's up guys welcome back to the channel my name is ben so as you can see here on my mac i'm currently on mac os version 15.0 with beta 4 and this is the current build number that i have so you would logically think that the next update is mac os 15.0 beta 5 with a slightly updated build number that looks similar to this but if we go into the general go to the software update page give it a few seconds it's just gonna pop up and load something new so because i have the beta updates off if i go here and click where it says betas you can see we have three various versions of mac os 15 sequoia that we can select and today apple has just released mac os sequoia 15.1 developer beta with a few updates now if i select it right here and click done it's just going to check for an update but i'm just showing you this to see how we've jumped all the beta 5 beta 6 beta 7 beta 8 and potentially rc and just went straight ahead to mac os sequoia 15.1 so you can see it's seen the update right here in in the software update page it's just trying to pull it now over the air and then we're gonna see the update size whether it comes in at a gigantic size so right here mac os 15 sequoia uh mac os 15.1 beta rather and if we click on the more info tab right here you can see it actually is smaller than beta 3 of mac os 15.0 that came in at 14 gigs this one comes in at 1.75 gigs and i'm updating from mac os 15.0 beta 4 and right now you can see the actual download file size is exactly as the update file and you can see it's downloading pretty quickly but just to show you some other updates that apple released today alongside this you can see apple released ios 18.1 alongside ipad os 18.1 beta we have mac os 15.1 of course and a few other updates so most of these updates I do cover here on the channel at Halfman of Tech and if you want to get to know what's new within these updates and these betas definitely do hit subscribe so that you don't miss out so let me just finish updating and then we'll see what's new within this update just like that my device is now up to date and if we go to the general and go to the software update page you can see the beta profile update that i have is mac os sequoia 15.1 and since i've already updated my device you can see the new build number and version of mac os sequoia that we have it's now mac os 15.1 with the build 24b 5009i and of course this update comes with a bunch of new features and changes especially if you are in the us and if you are kind of observant you've probably seen the first one and it's right here apple intelligence so you can see the apple intelligence siri icon here has been updated and when you click on it right here you can see that apple intelligence and siri and here it talks about how you can use it to be able to personalize your workspace on your mac and other different applications and one such application includes safari you are going to be looking at it shortly but unfortunately for me as you can see in my country origin i'm in canada right now and you can see apple intelligence is is not available in your country origin it's kind of unfortunate because you know i have an apple silicon mac which is one of the supported devices and in case you want to see the supported devices for apple intelligence i will show it to you right here you can see in order for you to be able to test and try out apple intelligence you need these devices so on the mac you need basically an apple silicon m1 mac or newer and on the iphone you need an iphone 15 pro or iphone 15 pro max so my mac like i mentioned is an apple silicon one so it is supported but you can see apple mentions that apple intelligence is free to use and will be initially available in the u.s english coming in beta later this year and since i'm not in the us i do have my siri language set to english us because i find out that if i do this i have more features even though i'm in canada but unfortunately this workaround is not working in the meantime i will have to see if there's anything i can do in the background or in the profile manipulation editing or even with the different os itself to see if i can get this to work outside of the us but for now it's there if you are in the us and if you are not in the us and even though you have your language set to english united states you won't be able to try out apple intelligence and you can see i'll try turn off siri for now and then if i turn it back on this siri logo icon hasn't been updated so i've just turned it on and now 
another thing i wanted to highlight is the siri icon here too hasn't been updated and if you click on it it still has the old siri uh ui let me know if you are in the us if you see the newly updated apple intelligence siri icon that looks like this this is something that Apple keeps changing from time to time with the Mac OS 15.0 throughout the beta stages. We've seen them change this a number of times and right now you can see when you click on the emojis they look so big and I'll click on it right again you can see how much they pop more and they look bigger and enlarged unlike before and you can see here too that this has been updated for example here where you have like different foods it's been updated before it was just like a burger in the drink you can see also like the hearts here or different emblems and symbols has been updated and at the same time some of the recents too have been updated and if you have stickers you can put them in the same line with your emojis and be able to send them so this is something that with mac os 15.0 we've seen them change and then revert to the old version but now on this version of mac os 15.1 that i'm on they have updated it and it seems like hopefully it's here to stay because i like the new one it just doesn't clutter the symbols themselves and just gives you a better view and makes the emojis and icons here pop more the maps application recently received an update it's currently in beta but it's not one such app that i use a lot on my mac i use it more on my iphone of course but you'll be happy to know that if you are not perhaps an iPhone user or a Mac user and you want to try maps on different other OS's, Apple Maps is now available on the web and this has launched on beta. So if you want to be able to try it, you can see you have this ability to go to this website here, which is beta.maps.apple.com and right here you'll be able to finally see apple maps on the web and uh, this is a beta that was launched on wednesday and in this update of course since this is web-based it's available and you can see here it tells you that yes it's not final it's in beta and you can do most of what you can do on the ios version in this apple maps including viewing guides ordering food directly from maps exploring cities and getting information about different businesses in apple maps and apple says that it's going to launch additional features in this apple maps like look around in different cities and regions throughout the coming few months this is something that apple is definitely going to be working on and trying to enhance the user experience for those that don't have apple devices and yeah you can see the other sub menus that you have here such as search guides and directions and now you don't have to use an api through DuckDuckGo in order to use apple maps it's available as long as you use this beta website one major update that i want to show you here that a lot of people are actually not talking about if you go to the apple tv application and settings and then go to where it says playback you can see you have preferred hdmi pass through and basically this allows you to play supported audio in dolby atmos and other dolby audio formats using hdmi pass through and connected to a supported audio device and it's good to see that with this mac os 15.1 this option is still kept I'll be doing further testing to see if it's true lossless Dolby Audio that has been updated here and of course this carries over in different applications such as the apple tv like you saw the apple music and even quicktime also has this hdmi audio pass through so that's something that's good now something also that doesn't carry over with this mac os 15.1 is image playground even though you can see here we have the new apple intelligence at least we are able to see it in the settings and in the different applications through search and on this mac if i go to the application that search image playground i tried the update and after i updated before on previous versions of mac os 15.0 we were able to see some sort of image playground that you use used to generate ai images but now with this 15.1 maybe it's because i'm in canada but image playground is no longer being found and even when you join like the words and search through the applications or through this home app it's not been found so maybe if you are in the us it's slightly different but before it was showing and now after updating it's not showing
If you are a person that uses AirPods on your device a lot, then you'd be happy to know that an issue that was affecting a lot of users with AirPods when it comes to microphone and audio sharing as well as screen sharing on different third party applications such as Microsoft Teams. Besides FaceTime, FaceTime was okay. There were issues and now you are able to share your audio and you are able to do screen sharing and your microphone will work with your AirPods Pro first gen and with your AirPods Pro second gen since those were the most affected devices. So it's good to see that Apple has fixed that. Now, something that was recently updated has to do with iPhone mirroring. And in the previous Mac OS 15.0 update that I was on, I had the option to actually choose different sizes. And because I'm on a large 27 inch external display monitor that I'm on right now, when I have the large view section right here or the large window of the iPhone mirroring, it's very helpful. But if I press command with the minus or the plus i'm unable to change the size which i was able to do in the previous update and at the same time if i go to the iphone mirroring view window i i don't have the ability to select large or actual size or small size and if i press command minus or command positive or even command o i'm unable to revert to the actual size or make it smaller or larger so this option was there before but with this mac os 15.0 it has been sort of disabled now safari 2 has received some minor updates and of course if we go to the about safari the version you can see that we have is still the same even on mac os 15.1 it's still version 18.0 but the build number has changed it's 20619.1.2 2.2.1.3 and before we had 206.19.1.22 and of course some of the changes that have been brought here have to do with Apple intelligence that's now supported on Apple Silicon M1 Max if you're in the US. The reason why they updated Safari to a new version is to accommodate different writing tools on macOS in Safari and writing tools are supported in different applications such as Mail, Notes, Safari, and Keynotes. And you'll be able to basically rephrase your phrases using writing tools on Safari, all thanks to this update, especially if you're in the US where this is officially supported starting with Mac OS 15.1. The Stocks application received some minor updates. They did an application overhaul and when you open it up, you get to see what's new with Stocks and you can click continue and then it it has a new pop-up window that you know you can unlock premium business news plus but this is not something for me but the application icon itself was recently updated to make the graph or the sign that you see this wave here more prominent without having this vertical lines out of their appearance. The App Store, there's a number of applications that were recently updated. I recently updated Final Cut Pro, but now after updating, we do have a few other updates such as Numbers, Pages, and Keynotes. And if you haven't updated, you can just click where it says Update All, and this will make sure that your various up at least Apple default applications will work properly on Mac OS 15.1. And if they are, for example, you see that I had to close Safari in order to update, but some of them that work with Apple intelligence, such as pages will require you to perhaps restart your device or restart the application after you install the update, but do check to see which applications are available for you. But before you get all excited and start to update your devices to the latest Mac OS 15.1 Sequoia that I'm on right now, it's important to know that when I was updating, I actually ran into an issue. My Mac froze, even force quit wasn't working. So, it still has some bugs and issues in the background. Of course, this is expected of a beta, but in the meantime, this is my first on hands look when it comes to the new Mac OS 15.1 update. It's unfortunate Apple intelligence is not yet here because of my country origin, but we are seeing some resemblance in the OS when it comes to some different subsections and different applications that are going to support Apple intelligence. So let me know what you think about this video. And if you're going to be updating your device to Mac OS Sequoia 15.1, one. And that's about it for me. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.